and this one is um, lemon and ginger I think yeah lemon and ginger so how has this helped my gut well the point is that it's increasing variety and it's mm -hmm. also pleasurable because it has all of the characteristics of refreshment it's mm. fizzy so one of the great tricks of sodas, as they call them in America, is that a soda or a fizzy drink, whether it's Iron Brew or any other fizzy um, soft drinks, they, c they actually intrinsically please you partially because you're hardwired to feel that, f that fizzy drinks are good for you. Mm. Because ancestrally, fermented drinks were fizzy. Oh. So isn't that, isn't yeah. that clever or not clever? It was actually, yeah. it wasn't done, you know, that the first um, sodas and so on weren't made as a sort of as a way of expressing ancestral wisdom. They would just happen to be following on from yeah, what yeah, was yeah. the heritage yeah. of making sparkling drinks that were naturally sparkling rather than being industrially yeah. c uh, contrived. Yeah. Kombucha is like the new coconut water. Yeah. I'm not a huge fan. That was nice. But what qualities does this have, and why is it good for our gut? Well, the best kombucha is homemade because it has the activity of the bacteria living and dynamically developing in the bottle. And the problem with commercially made kombucha is that it's usually sweeter to give people a, 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 you know, a more moorish um, appreciation for it, whereas most kombucha is intrinsically usually sour, slightly sour, mm -hmm. because most, you know, we, our palates have gone over to the sweet side. We've gone over to the dark side, mm -hmm. whereas our ancestors had sour, much sour, sense in their mm. palates and so kombucha these days has become yet another drink that is uh, joining the soft beverages the sweet soft beverages mm. and in America for instance they had a big run-in with the authorities because it does it is mildly alcoholic I mean you're it's talking funny. here anything up to one 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 point one percent okay. it can be yeah that in your bag but yeah. but, 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 <laughs> but, 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 but quite a lot <laughs> They have to control it on the, on the basis of the um, weights and measures and all the sort of things about alcoholic licenses. Blah, blah, blah. So what happens is, is that as soon as you go into a commercial production, you're losing the bacterial energy and you're also losing the deep flavors that you get from home brews, where it's constantly changing. Mm. Because as soon as you go into big scale production, people want uniformity. Mm. Am I going to buy a lemon and ginger kombucha? It's got to taste the same every single yeah. time. And you well, that's also nonsense. The fun <laughs> of naturally fizzy drinks, kombucha and water kefir, is that if you get let them get too lively and don't burp them, breathe them, whatever mm -hmm. needs doing, they it's will. Like a baby. It is. They will explode. Yeah, 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 unlike yeah. a baby. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we hope. Well, yeah. And 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 you, you mustn't forget. Uh, at, at the end of the day, what we're looking at here is some foods and drinks. I, I, I'm absolutely clear about this. Some foods and drinks do not suit themselves to mass production. Yeah.